Okay, cool. So officially, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to today's event. Uh, the topic of today's event is differences between UX design in Japan and the West. We have our amazing speaker Hira today with us. We're going to talk about it around 40 minutes. Uh, is a presentation and 20 minutes probably dedicated to Q&A. But of course, I strongly encourage if you have any question during the presentation, feel free to post this question or feedback in the chat. We are going to make several breaks during the presentation as well. So yeah, whatever you have, anything, feedback, insights, feel free to post it in the chat. Uh, for those of you who are joining our events for the first time, my name is Sasha. I'm in charge of events partnerships at Levagon Tokyo Coding Bootcamp. I will do a very quick introduction of Levagon Tokyo and our community, what we are doing here and how we are related to the topic of today's presentation. Please bear with me. I'm gonna share my screen really quickly. Cool, and I believe you can see. So what is Levagon Tokyo? It's a coding bootcamp. Uh, what we do here, we um, teach people how to code how to build their applications from scratch during our web development bootcamps and also how to use, analyze and manipulate data during our data science bootcamps. We run them in two formats, the full-time format nine intensive fix and also part-time program for those who have some family work commitments, 24 weeks. A uh, little bit stats. We originally from France, Paris. We started seven years ago and we quickly spread out the world. Right now we have campuses in 45 cities around the world and around 13,000 graduates from both of our web development and data science programs. We have very product oriented bootcamp. 90% of the time our students code. Um, yeah, this is what I said about the community and about our Japan campus. We are based in a working place called Impact Hub Tokyo, 10 minutes walk from the Meguro station. Uh, we started almost five years ago. Since then, we had over 350 alumni who graduated from our web development and data science batches. And uh, since we teach in English, we usually have a lot of nationalities joining our boot camps, as you can see, 40 plus. The typical age 29 years old, uh, that's where people decide to change their career or upskill themselves. And the dynamic tech community events like this, we run them every week, free workshops and tech talks in order to educate and nurture our amazing community in Japan. Cool, that's what I said about the bootcamp. That's about the format. Um, the typical job outcomes, a lot of our alumni become developers after graduating, some of them who would like to juggle both business and tech become product managers. Um, also, it's not mentioned here, but some of them become UX designers. And this is why the topic of today's event is very relevant to some of our students. I know that some of Levagon current students and alumni are joining us. So I hope uh, this workshop will be super useful for you guys. Uh, so yeah, some of the alumni, be, uh, some of the um, students become freelancers. Some of them start their own companies, become entrepreneurs. And these are the dates for the next intakes which, and the, the, the year is wrong, sorry, it's 2022. Um, and also maybe the last slide, a lot of people asking about some discounts. Yes, we do a very um, cool discount, Hello Work subsidy. If you're interested, feel free to send me a message about it. That was very quick introduction. <laughs> um, thank you for bearing with me. And right now I'm giving a microphone to our amazing speaker, Hyra, the floor is yours. Go ahead. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me just start by sharing my screen. Right, you see my screen, right? Nope, not yet. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, let's see. But we still see your cool play. Yeah, so right now we see Google. We see the browser that you open. Okay. Yay. Yep. It's right, there. ready. Okay, well, let's start. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for joining tonight. I'm humbled uh, so many people are here to attend this event. Um, and I hope uh, by the end of today, you will leave with some knowledge. 
new knowledge. Uh, this topic has been my everyday question um, as a UX designer from Europe and now in Japan. Uh, I wrote this article. Um, I wrote an article about it uh, that I shared on LinkedIn. Um, this is what led me to me being here tonight. I'll start uh, with a short introduction of myself, then I'll explain what UX is and share some everyday examples of it in Japan. Uh, to then jump into the main topic, which is the difference between um, UX in Japan and the West. And as Sasha say, we should have some time for questions um, at the end. Um, Um, yeah, so who am I? My name is Jairo, Jairo Hurtado. I'm a UX designer based in Tokyo with five years of experience in Sweden and Japan. I speak Spanish, English, Swedish, uh, but I don't speak uh, Japanese. On my free time, I play futsal and tennis and I enjoy trying new foods and traveling around Japan. I was born in a city in Colombia called Cali. Um, I did high, my high school there, and then I moved to Bogota to do my bachelor in advertising. After finishing my um, bachelor, I moved to the UK, to London, to do my master in visual communication. Um, after that, uh, my wife got a job in Sweden, and we decided to move and trade out. We lived there for six years, out of which uh, four I worked as a UX designer. Um, yep, but then after six years, uh, we decided to move again. Uh, my wife is Japanese and she got a job uh, in Tokyo. So we decided to, to do it and we have been here for uh, one year already. Um, okay, so what did I choose UX? After finishing uh, my bachelor in advertising in 2012, I was uh, witnessing the shift in media from analog to digital ch channels. And I became more interested um, um, in designing for mobile solutions. Uh, UX design was a relatively new field in design and there was a high demand in Sweden uh, for it. Um, I, saw, I saw it as an excited, um, uh, option to pursue since I uh, get joy, a lot of joy from problem, uh, problem solving. And I wanted to make it easier for people to use products that can reach uh, millions of people. Uh, yes, a typical day at work for me is um, while I work on my uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, my design software is Figma. My task management, uh, management tool is uh, Jira. And uh, for communication, I use Slack. Um, yeah, just uh, about it is uh, half of, of my job is me receiving uh, tasks, tasks from the PMs, who at the same time they receive um, um, tasks uh, requests from from the customers. Uh, so then they ask me to to design new features uh, for for the platform. Um, and then uh, the other uh, half is uh, me creating uh, tasks uh, for the PMs, um, trying to always improve the product. Um, a little bit of the company that, that I work now is, uh, is Tripla, is a booking engine platform for, uh, for hotels. Um, all right, uh, so what is UX? UX applies to anything that can be experienced, be it a website, a coffee machine, or a visit to the supermarket. It refers to the interaction between the user and a product or service. User experience design considers um, all the different elements uh, that shape this experience. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, what's the difference between uh, UX and UI. Um, so for example, the, the one with the image with the brain where the right side of the brain is creative and represents um, UI versus the left side of the brain. 
uh, that's uh, UX and represent it's more analytic or an image of a pedestrian uh, crossing a park uh, using a shortcut uh, as an example of user experience versus the design um, the, the is, uh, design of, of the paths of the way of the park. And the classic Keynes example, I think it's one of the um, most popular ones where the UI, um, UI uh, represents the, the, the glass bottle represents the UI versus the, um, the inverted uh, squishable, uh, squishable bottle that represents UX. So, well, it's not one versus the other. Uh, they complement each other and they both make of um, uh, a bigger group, which is customer experience. Uh, yeah, well, uh, user experience is a conglomeration of tasks focused on the optimization of a product for um, effective and enjoyable use. Uh, user design um, is its complement, uh, the look and feel. The presentation and interactivity of a product uh, in relation to websites and apps, uh, it design uh, UI design considers the look and feel um, inter and interactivity of the product. It's all about making sure that the user interface of a product is as intuitive as possible, and that means carefully considering. Um, every visual interactive element that the user might encounter. So yeah, yeah, let's look at some examples of UX on products and spaces in Japan. So for example, uh, there's uh, clear products and instructions on um, food uh, products and, and packaging. Um, as for example, the first one, uh, how to prepare a ramen. Uh, the second image so, uh, shows instructions of how to open an onigiri. If you live in Japan, you, you will know it. And then um, how, to, how to dispose a carton. Um, yes, so the next one is ATMs um, in a cash heavy society as Japan that the design considers objects uh, um, the user might be carrying and want to lay, uh, lay to be uh, hands-free uh, hands to complete the transaction. So for example, uh, you can see that there's space to leave your coffee or your pores um, or for elderly people to leave uh, uh, the walking stick. And then there's a, we can see an example of uh, the metro, uh, me, uh, the, the metro in Tokyo. Um, well, being uh, one, one of the most populated cities in the world, uh, signage must be really important to ensure and uh, ensure a proper movement uh, on the ground. And as you can see, uh, they're not afraid to be bold enough so you don't miss it. And yes, if you want to um, see more examples about it, uh, follow this amazing account, Iconic Diary on Instagram. And she has an amazing series about uh, UX in Japan. Okay, let's continue. Uh, yeah, so if Japan is so impressive uh, in UX for non-digital products and service, uh, services, then what happened to the digital products? Uh, if you go and do a quick search into Google, and then you write, why are Japanese websites? And then this is what you get. So cluttered or so outdated. And similar thing happens uh, to when you search for apps. They're, it says they're bad or inaccurate. Um, so for, I, I don't have, um, I don't speak Japanese and I don't have many Japanese friends. So for me to um, get some answers, I went uh, to a group uh, of foreign residents in Tokyo. And then I asked, uh, I asked them this question. Uh, when it comes to Japanese websites, uh, what annoys you the most? Uh, many people ask, uh, uh, answered uh, the questioner. 
So the, the, the first, the one, the option that goes to, that got the, the most votes um, was web forms to force you to input a specific style. Um, yeah, I will talk about it later. Um, but then there were a few more options, but I will be talking uh, about uh, the, 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 third, the three ones marked. So web forms, how, um, how cluttered the design is, and also text and images. Hey, I got something I want to say. Um, yeah. I'm gay. Uh, okay, Sasha, can you kick out that verse? Yeah, so sorry for that, Hyro. I think we probably uh, got uh, attacked by some bots today, or like some Zoomers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel free just to ignore it. I will try my best to um to kick out the the disruptors as much as possible, but yeah, just ignore it. So sorry for that. Right, let's continue. Uh, okay, so web forms. Um, <laughs> there were a lot of fun comments uh, when I uh, asked this question, um, and many people uh, sharing their experiences. Um, some funny and some other not so funny. <laughs> uh, when browsing uh, to get some information up about uh, what's the problem with Japanese forms, uh, I came across this um, this cartoon of a Japanese um, user uh, just filling a form, and then when it finishes, he says, "Please input alphanumeric full width characters," which is uh, I'm sure is the experience that many have had. And it does feel like hell. So let's uh, see some examples of it. So for example, this uh, form, the first form on the left, uh, asks you to input address and your full name uh, in Kana. Well, many of us, we don't, uh, we, we can't write Japanese. So when they ask you to, to complete a form in, in a specific style that you can't write, then uh, it's almost impossible to, to fill it. Uh, the second on the top right, uh, it's about your name. It asks uh, if, your, if your name is longer than, than five characters, then you can't complete it. And the last one uh, on the bottom right is the Arizona Bank. It's one of the most, the biggest banks uh, in Japan. And to log in, it asks you to um, input uh, half with alphanumeric characters. Um, again, if you if you don't know how to change uh, your keyboard, uh, it's um, impossible to feel. Um, so a bit of context here. Uh, these two formats are called Hankaku, which is half width, and Senkaku, uh, full width. And it's not just uh, Japan foreign uh, residents uh, who find switching um, the two characters types uh, annoying. Japanese do dislike the inconvenience of switching between uh, full width and half width characters when filling out forms online. Texting, um, so let's talk about texting images and accessibility. Um, Japan seems to get uh, digital differently. Given that Japan is such a paper-based country, uh, when trying to move uh, the uh, printed content to, uh, to the web, um, they literally use the same images to be displayed, um, the, this, um, the same images that they use in advertising or uh, on their direct mail. Um, they uh, to be they use them to be displayed in their websites and do not separate text uh, from image on the process. Uh, this makes information inaccessible for mobile users, for SEO search engine optimization, and for users uh, with low vision who might need uh, screen readers. So I have four examples um, that I will talk about. Just a sip of water. Um, yeah, let's open them. You can see my screen, right? 
Yeah, I can see right now your screen and I see the, um, the Salvatore pizza. Just also one thing for the participants. I'm so sorry I and I uh, disable uh, the muting, uh, muting yourself and also I disable chatting just for a while in order to escape this um, the sudden attack of bots. But I promise I will uh, enable the chatting um, right after the presentation. So sorry for that. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, uh, so for example, we can see um, this chain, Pizza Salvatore, which instead of separating um, each flavor of, of pizza for you to um, to select uh, if you if you want to order a delivery, they literally, as I mentioned, uh, use the promotional image images that, that they print. They just put it on their websites uh, on their homepage. So this makes it very difficult uh, to navigate if you're a mobile user or if um, if you have low visibility and you want to use a screen reader. And it's also very long. Um, if you go to a website, for example, from Shizuoka Prefecture, you can see that uh, the, if you change from Japanese and English, then the tabs uh, don't translate, neither this uh, the text in, in these uh, buttons or images. I don't know who, uh, if they're buttons or images. <laughs> but uh, the problem is, uh, Again, they can't be uh, read by screen readers, so a person with uh, low visibility can't uh, can't use it. Well, this is very crowded for any Western uh, user. This will be the, 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 this is very disorienting. You can see that there's. Uh, many different colors. Uh, the information doesn't seem to be um, categorized. Let's see it in Japanese. Um, versus, um, yeah, so and there's a lack of negative space. So for Western users, um, yeah, this is very difficult to navigate. And the last example will be um, live supermarket where uh, here they explain you um, the benefits uh, of online delivery um, and how to how to do it. But uh, yes, again, uh, if you are on your mobile, then this will be very difficult to read. Uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, WCAG, which is um, um, web content accessibility guidelines. And then uh, they define how to make web content uh, more accessible to people uh, with disabilities. Um, accessibility uh, involves a wide range of disabilities, including visual, auditory, physical, speech, cognitive, language, um, learning and neurological disabilities. According to this map uh, from AAA Media, Japan has adopted um, WCAG 2.0, uh, which is great news. Uh, but the reality is that it doesn't. So as one, uh, one user uh, noted, um, say that uh, this person said many sites don't meet the accessibility uh, standards for WCAG 2.0, something that would be illegal for public sector websites in the EU, and uh, not only in the EU, but also um, in the US. Okay, um, yeah, time for more questions. Okay, time for questions. Let me enable the chat. I hope we won't have um, we won't have trolls and pranks anymore. I have we all have very polite people. Um, so right now, yeah, if you have any questions, people feel free to write down in the chat. Um, so from Ricardo, I have a question. What is 
uh, WCAG. Is this something that you mentioned in your presentation, Hiro? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a web content accessibility guidelines. And these are uh, the guidelines. There's uh, three, there, these are the guidelines that def define um, how the, uh, how websites, uh, the rules that, uh, uh, or advice. The, um, it, it's, a, it's a guide, or it's a guide that to advise how to, um, what the websites should look for people with disabilities so they can be accessible. Right, is it something global where it's uh, mainly working for uh, US and English speaking countries? It's, it's global, uh, it was created in the US, um, but it has been uh, widely adopted worldwide. Thank you. So David is asking, can you show the map again, please? David, do you have some particular question about the map? If yes, okay, so showing map for David. David, if you have any question about it, feel free to write down in the chat. And we have a bunch of questions actually for you. Um, let me let me just read it, okay. Um, so we have, what do Japanese users think of highly cluttered design of product websites? I think we have this question uh, for the end of this workshop, we definitely want to ask Japanese users what they think about that. Um, we have also feedback uh, from Christoph. I'm a Westerner who speaks Japanese, but I feel the same about the Japanese websites. Did you find out why Japanese people are okay with these crowded sites? Um, right. Did you find out why Japanese people are so okay with these crowded sites? I think it's also something that's gonna be featured at the end of the presentation, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we also have a question from Tsu, um, another question feedback. It is so interesting to see that because of the Japanese restaurants here in Toronto, it kind of does it too. And every time when I want to order food, I need to zoom in so much to see the menus. Right, uh, so we have uh, a lot of users writing their insights right now in the chat. Uh, let me let me scroll down for questions. Uh, so question from Manu, do you have qualitative quantitative data on how local Japanese use Japanese websites. Any interesting points for interaction design for Asia? No, I, I can't talk for Asia. As Ricardo point, uh, asked before for China, I know about uh, Japan, um, but I can't talk for the rest of Asia. <laughs> and qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, no, I unfortunately don't have. Um, it, this is uh, information that I have, like research in the in the last in the last year, really. But mostly through um, reading articles um, in in the media uh, on internet, and yes, asking some Japanese users. But um, yeah, I don't have uh, the specific data that I can share. Right. Uh, so we have uh, several uh, several attendees asking about the, what the Japanese people think about that. So uh, yeah, definitely we would like to ask this question to if we have any Japanese uh, attendees. This is something that we can discuss after the presentation. Uh, we also have a question: How do you balance between good UX and, in this case, the norm culture of Japanese images on the text, etc.? Let's leave that question for the end. <laughs> but yeah. I will be talking about it. Right. So you left all the like a juicy and provocative things to the end. This is really good. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the situation is changing? Is there is a desire to improve the UX of Japanese websites or this is not a problem for them? I will say it's not a problem for them. It's um, when I ask uh, Japanese, uh, my, my Japanese friends, uh, they actually don't see, uh, don't, don't, don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, since they don't navigate Western user, uh, Western websites, they don't, they don't really know what they're missing. Uh, so they're very used to, to this, um, inaccessible or what we, what we might see as very crowded and bad UX, but, um, yeah, it, it, it works for for Japanese users. And that's actually, 
I, I will be talking about it in the next section. Cool. So we also have a question about does a screen reader exist for Japanese websites? And we have a we have also an answer from Miyuki, who is I assume a Japanese user. Yes, they do exist. Uh, right. And we also have question from Fabiano. Okay. I had never considered the fact that text on the images may be an impediment for those who use TTS or related software. This was very interesting. Is there any workaround to this you commonly use when syncing the design of a website? Well, don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't use uh, text in images. Um, they, that's definitely a, a no. Uh, in UX design, but um, for some reason that I don't know, um, in Japan it's widely used. Right. Um, right. Is Japanese website made this way on purpose? I want to know if they do for any reason. <laughs> so we have many questions here about why. Um, so we will probably leave this for a discussion later. Um, at the end of the presentation, that's gonna be, yeah, like feedbacks. We would like to know your opinion as well. Uh, maybe I will go also to some questions that I see in the chat. Is, uh, is it a website maintainability issue? Because the design philosophy seems reminiscent of early 2000s and late 90s websites. Yeah, that's more feedback than a question. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I don't think it is, to be honest. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So we have actually a lot of feedbacks in the chat. I know, I know people, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a, it's a very sensitive topic. It's a very provocative topic. So we try to be very, um, I would say neutral here, right? We don't yeah. try to say something bad and something good. This is, this is how it, it is. <laughs> exactly. Okay. People like, net, let's not stop this facts conversation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's, let's, maybe, let's maybe continue. Yeah. Um, online banking. Uh, that's a topic uh, that many people were very engaged as well when I asked the question. Uh, with one user saying, when you realize your 30 year old Hotmail account has more protection and security gates than your Japanese online, online accounts. Um, so what's there to dislike about uh, Japanese uh, uh, bank, uh, web, uh, bank websites? So yeah, there's um, concern of lack of security, uh, visual layout that, that resembles websites from 20 years ago, uh, mobile apps and websites that underperform, inability to open a bank account online, or bureaucracy and, bureaucracy and unnecessary requirements when um, using banking services. Uh, so on a personal note here, um, when looking for, for uh, my bank that I was going to open uh, a bank account here in, in Tokyo, uh, my first requirement was for it to have uh, online banking. Uh, that's, um, since many of them uh, didn't, uh, well, I went for the one that had actually the best UX and was um, the, the easy, easiest to use, uh, which is not the rule in, in Japan. Emails. Uh, yeah, you might wonder what's there to complain about emails. Um, well, when I asked the question, one user said, uh, no, uh, made a comment about the Japan Airlines uh, website uh, emails, sorry, um, that despite uh, hundreds of billions, uh, billions of uh, yen in revenue every year, they still manage to have promote promotional emails that look like um, they learn email marketing in 1995. And another uh, user also complains about uh, difficulty, difficulty of unsubscribing from emails. So in the West, uh, most of, of the marketing emails, when you receive one, uh, they give you the option to unsubscribe. Uh, but in Japan, um, 
I have <laughs> to be honest, I actually haven't seen the first one that gives you the option to unsubscribe directly from its emails, and it's almost impossible uh, to do it. Um, yeah, so there's a pro in the way Japanese uh, marketing emails are, which is that uh, the message appears to be more personal and not automated. Um, but uh, the cons uh, is that the color, there are no colors, um, uh, graphics or formatting. Emails uh, may lack uh, visual appeal and it's harder to make uh, call to actions stand out. Uh, here we see uh, two examples of a uh, Japanese uh, domestic company, which is Wow Wow, it's a streaming company, uh, streaming service company, and then everybody I think knows Spotify. And you can see the contrast uh, between the two emails. Um, the use of uh, graphics is, well, it's a lot more in, in Spotify versus uh, Wow Wow doesn't have any. Uh, there's an option to unsubscribe, most, most important in the bottom, if you don't want to keep receiving emails. And uh, yeah, the call to action, you can see how it's uh, very clear on the Spotify email versus Wow Wow, it, um, it's not that much. Okay, and the last one, that's I think is the one that people are most passionate about and uh, relates the most. It's a clutter visual layout. So this is how Japanese websites uh, feel when for a Western user. If you know um, well, uh, where Swally, then <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, in the West, uh, in the West, uh, we assume that a page is well designed uh, when the design follows the conventions that we're used to. A Japanese user has uh, different expectations. Yeah. So, what are these conventions? Um, several websites from the West prefer fewer texts. Uh, big fonts and um, big font sizes and images are used to emphasize the company future products. Um, uh, also, uh, CTA buttons are often utilized to direct the user to more information about these products. Um, moreover, websites usually apply um, 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 fewer. Um, uh, fewer texts uh, representing um, uh, their their company. Um, fewer colors, sorry, fewer col uh, fewer colors to represent their company. Uh, in the other hand, uh, as opposed to many Western buyers, Japanese consumers require a lot of uh, a substantial amount of detail and convincing before they uh, they they buy at them. Um, those information should be accessible to visitors without scrolling or going through a series of steps and buttons. And this led to Japanese um, websites' utilization of larger amounts of text to give more room to uh, the detail of the products they're promoting. In addition, another reason why Japanese websites, uh, web design, um, are so, is so different uh, is due to the placement of elements. Uh, to the Western eye, it can be easily seen that Japanese web design uh, lacks negative space. This results in the perception that various, uh, various web elements, elements, which include text and pictures, have been squeezed into a tiny space. Western websites go from overview to specifics, uh, while Japanese websites, websites intend to present uh, specifics into within the overview. The information is presented in parallel. Um, this is due to um, also, uh, there's some marketing um, theory called uh, Konrad Dianshin or safety in confusion. 
And it's the idea that if a business uh, puts all possible information on a sign, advert or public space, they aren't hiding anything and must be legit and trustworthy. Trustworthy. Um, to the to uh, to non-Japanese eyes, um, this is very disorienting. But to the Japanese, especially folks over fifty years old, um, they see it as um, reassuring. Um, um, by um, uh, they can read all that uh, all the information that uh, that it's available and be confident that they're buying the best thing on the market. Um, I have prepared some side-by-side uh, -side comparisons. Um, so now um, I have uh, so I have uh, some uh, two American brands that uh, have localized their uh, web design for Japanese um, audience. So let's start with uh, Yahoo. Well, you can see with your own eyes how different uh, the designs are. Uh, you can uh, we can see that on uh, on the left um, there's uh, there is no negative space um, and information doesn't seem to be categorized at least for Western users um, versus on the right uh, you you can see it's a lot more minimal uh, and there's a clear way uh, to to navigate uh, the website. Another, another example is Starbucks. Um, you can see how they localize um, the, the web design for Japan, which is very, very different. Um, yeah, again, you can see a lot more negative space on the right versus uh, every little space that they have on the left, uh, they, they use it. Um, also, there's a lot of information displayed uh, at the same time. Um, another example is um, Rakuten Travel, uh, who has adopted a striking different layout for Japanese users um, versus those who search in a, in a different language. Um, Japanese version, uh, the, the Japanese version, uh, you can see that there are many more filters um, of, uh, to choose from, and promotions and destinations are promoted above the fold. Uh, leaving um, zero ne uh, negative space versus on the right, uh, which I think most of you uh, are more familiar with. There's a search field with, uh, with a few options and, and a clear uh, call to action versus uh, then the background is uh, very minimal. And the public sector, there's also uh, Japan Post Bank, for example, although much less crowded than other uh, examples, um, the way they display the, the information is, is very different. We can see on, on the right, there's uh, three columns uh, that uh, display uh, clear, uh, uh, clear menus versus on the left, uh, each tab uh, displays uh, more tabs. So, the information is the same, but uh, displayed in, in a different way that uh, works for Japanese people. And as a, as a last example, I have uh, many of you know Maria Kondo, Maria Kondo uh, with her net, she went um, very famous on Netflix, I think a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, you you might you probably have heard about her. Um, yeah, you and then you you can see how the the design of the thumbnails is very different to the Japanese audience, uh, which is uh, resembles a lot of Japanese TV, uh, with a lot of colors, uh, big fonts, and almost uh, no negative space. Um, versus the right, which is uh, no text at all. Uh, on the thumbnail images and um, a, a much minimal palette of colors as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's hard to judge something uh, 
we often think of as global through the eyes of a foreigner, even something as familiar as a website. And I'm sure I'm skipping many insights um, and can't read Japanese websites, literally, as a Japanese person would. Uh, despite this, I'm sure there are many um, points that we all can agree that uh, uh, that could be better and that Japanese internet has gone, has got stuck in the past in certain regards. Thank you very much. That's it. Cool. Thank you so much, Haira. Thank you so much for a very insightful presentation. Uh, yeah, great job. <laughs> great workshop of people writing you in the chat. Um, yeah, sorry for that uh, disruption that we had. Um, so we uh, probably are moving to the um, to the Q and A session, right? So if you have any uh, feedback, if you have any questions, feel free to write down in the chat. But also, uh, a lot of you mentioned that it would be really interesting to know the Japanese user perspective on that. If we have any Japanese user in today's event, please, please write it down. How do you perceive? the Japanese UX design and how the how do Western websites look to you? Maybe they're too minimalistic, maybe nothing is written there, uh, too cold, <laughs> too empty. It would be really, really interesting to know your uh, insights as well and questions. questions. Oh, I, I will be curious to know if you actually can't find information in the Western websites. <laughs> so that's, that's our struggle, like information is very difficult to find in a Japanese website. I think. <laughs> right. Yeah, some people also are um, uh, really talking about the decluttering Marie Kondo, Japanese UX, <laughs> new Netflix hit, right? <laughs> uh, what is the Japanese definition of minimalism? <laughs> That's a curious question because often minimalism is, uh, you relate Japan to minim minimalism. For example, if you go to Muji, that's you know the the very minimalist brand or their furniture design is uh, quite similar to to uh, Scandinavian design, which is very minimal as well. But it's very opposite when you go to to their websites. It's a complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have some uh, question inside from Manu. I'm wondering if it has to do with the age demographics and a big up sorry, too many questions, and the bigger popularity of newspapers, it seems to me that websites look much more like newspapers. It's, I, I, yeah, I think, I, I mentioned this uh, in the presentation, is how they, con um, how they consume information. So I think it's more about the, um, if the, the amount of information, information that needs to be provided. So if you read more in, uh, without having to scroll down or navigate different pages. Uh, it's more reassuring for um, Japanese uh, users versus uh, that that will have the opposite effect on, on a Western user. Thank you. We have a question from Francis. Uh, since you have experience in Stockholm, in Tokyo, two big tech capitals, how does working as a UX designer in Tokyo compare to Stockholm? Well, uh, to be honest, I arrived here one year ago um, during COVID. And since then, so I, I actually landed a job um, since uh, when I was in quarantine. So I was uh, yeah, lucky to start working uh, one month after I landed here in August last year. Uh, but my point is that I have been working from home. And also it's... Um, I, I'm working with an international team, uh, which uh, doesn't make things uh, not much different to when I was in Sweden. Uh, culturally, there's uh, differences, um, but um, yeah, I, I can't uh, talk for many others that work in very domestic Japanese web, uh, Japanese companies that I know the experience is different. Thank you. We have an interesting question for you as well. Other features that you liked in the Japanese UX? <laughs> <laughs> it was very silence. 
Yes, I think uh, the, my silence speaks for itself. It, it's difficult to find something to, to think that's good uh, about uh, Japanese uh, web design. Um, I will say I, I, it needs to modernize at least for, for my eyes. Um, it's a lot more negatives than positives. We actually have a very interesting insight from Anastasia, uh, who is a foreigner who speaks Japanese. And she said that I'm quite happy when Japanese put some colorful text on their video, easier to understand the Japanese language. Makes totally sense for me as a learner of the Japanese language. <laughs> I, I'm sure it is. <laughs> right. What do you think about the future of Japanese UX? Is it going to be like Western style or do you think they will keep their style? Do you, like maybe you notice some changes over the year that you worked here? Mm. <laughs> no, I, I have not noticed any change. Um, if something, it is just uh, I think Japanese uh, web design have not changed in, in the last twenty years. And you might have noticed that I didn't actually talk about um, mobile design, and it's because many many websites are not accessible or. Uh, on 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 mobile, and um, actually many were designed for um, for um, for mobiles pre smartphone, so they're just very difficult to to navigate. Um, sorry, what was the question? I think I derailed. <laughs> no, no, no. There's also very interesting uh, insight uh, from a uh, person Kawajima in Zoom. Um, I'm Japanese and I find to use Japanese website difficult, but I think that when uh, ES sites like Rakuten has messy design, it's to give a feeling of treasure hunting for users and motivate them to buy uh, to buy more stuff. It's similar to experience of going to the Don Quixote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you about experience. Um... Yeah, I, there's a, I, I heard once, um, I can't be sure of this, but I think once Rakuten tried to, um, I was told that once Rakuten tried to uh, declutter their design and I, it actually didn't work. So they roll it back to their current design. And it's not that uh, it actually works for, for, for Japanese users. Um, yeah, I, as I talked before about, how it makes it more uh, feel more safe and more reassuring um, when it's crowded and when there is a lot of information at the same time. It's just uh, we read uh, uh, we read the informa information differently uh, in the West to how Japanese uh, obtain information on on a website. Right. Oh, we have so many feedbacks right now in the chat. Uh, it's very interesting to read, but unfortunately, we don't have time to read everything. But yeah, I'm, I'm reading all and I uh, do. Can you can you read the insights actually I wrote in the chat? There are like a lot of theories, a lot of feedbacks from people. Uh, I actually wasn't reading, sorry, but uh, <laughs> I know that there's 99 plus messages now. So. Right. So like <laughs> comparing to variety shows with all these cardboards, Japanese uh, consuming for different than Westerners, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Uh, so also it was a very interesting question like, slash suggestion. Have you ever talked to the Japanese UX designer? Like, do you have any Japanese UX designer in your company? And do they do do they do UX design differently from you? Is the approach different from you as well, or like everyone is a is a is a foreigner working for UX design? There is no other. Um, there's another UX designer, um, but no, we're not Japanese. Um, yeah, so we're trying to uh, to get insights, of course, and that's so. so uh, that's also why I got into this topic because I'm very curious to know. Uh, what uh, what UX is in in Japan? What works uh, or, or what what not? Because um, you often think of, of UX as as a some, as something global that the, all the users are quite similar and like behave the same, but like with a red button meaning da danger um, versus a green one reassuring, but colors and meanings and how we read information 
um, is not the same. Um, so no, I, I'm all, I'm always trying to to like learn and get more insights uh, about um, about it, and also trying to get more uh, do more user research at my company with the end users and the customers, and ask them what uh, what they think of uh, the new futures that uh, we design. I design. Cool. Thank you. It's really interesting insight we have from Ariel. I think once you study Japanese, you should do this event again to see maybe a change of perspective would happen. As a Japanese speaker and UX designer, you get used to and find it pleasing. So yeah, that's actually a great idea. We probably have this event one year later, and then I invite Hiro, and then we decide we just sit down and see if there are any changes. And if Hiro, your your perception, your insights also change. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do it in one year. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, I'll have recording and see how the uh, how the how the moods change. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So there is a there is a cool event that David right now posted. Uh, that that's about the UX feedback. Um, if you look at the chat, um, so you can yeah you can. Um, you can show the presentation, you can present your app over the prototype, and you can also get feedback from others. Uh, this is really interesting. Thank you so much, David, for sharing. I will probably attend. Um, really cool to know. Um, right, we need one more session of this for sure. <laughs> that was much fun. Let's Thank do you. it. Thank you. That was uh, really nice to have you today, and thank you so much. Uh, that was a great debut. Um, I'm 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 really sorry for the hiccup in the beginning. I will try my best uh, to 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 check people. I don't know how is it possible, but I usually our audience is very nice. Everyone is super polite. Everyone is super respectful. But sometimes, you know, this is the internet. All the things can happen. So um, my my apologies for that. But yeah. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your amazing feedback and thank you so for supporting us. Uh, it's like a lot of things. I will probably save this chat. I think, yeah. Okay, I saved the chat, so I, I have the data. So um, I will share with you all the messages, all the uh, questions that you, uh, all the feedbacks that you couldn't read, Hyra. So you can, you know, maybe um, do another research on that and make an article about that. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Cool. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation. Um, once again, looking forward to seeing you uh, at Levagon upcoming workshops and uh, mark your calendars for the next year workshop with Hiro. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you. Um, have a great evening for those based in Japan and have a great uh, afternoon or morning, whatever you are right now. Uh, it was nice to have you all and Hiro, you're the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you and bye. Okay, bye.